back. Vaccination numbers are going up a bit. COVID cases going down. The reality is this. We are traveling again. More people are using the new Salt Lake Airport. But we're talking about Craig Worth here. We're going to go back to a different time, a different era, back to when Salt Lake City was a major passenger rail hub. Hi, Craig. Yes, I'm back to when crowds were getting on and off the Yellowstone Special, the California Zephyr, and the City of Los Angeles Streamliner. Oh, what a time it was, and it's worth watching tonight. Here comes the Yellowstone Special. Oh, it was the 1950s, and trains were coming in here to the Union Pacific Station all day and night, and it was the same story down the street. Yes, the competing Denver and Rio Grande had welcomed trains at its station since 1910. It really is how most folks came to Salt Lake City. Indeed, we were a train hub and a destination. On to Salt Lake City, miracle metropolis that rose from dead desert sands. Rare Rio Grande film shows just how important Salt Lake City was to the train business. Salt Lake City, commercially and culturally the lodestone of the West, a tribute to the foresight and wisdom of its founder, Brigham Young. The rail company wanted you to take a day here. Majestically situated on a rolling slope, Utah's magnificent granite capital is a fitting symbol of this great commonwealth. Beautiful gardens surround the temple, and most prominent is this cactus reproduction of a beehive. Oh, a train trip to Salt Lake City. It was a big deal, and the Rio Grande picked a prominent Utahn to advertise it all. Heber J. Grant, seventh president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am delighted always to welcome visitors to Salt Lake City. The Lord's house has been built here, a desert has been redeemed. People of many nations have gathered here. I was born and raised in this valley and was a passenger on the first Rio Grande train in the Salt Lake City more than half a century ago. The passing years have strengthened the thought I had then that these fertile valleys of the Rockies are a tribute to the industry, sacrifice, thrift, and courage of the pioneer men and women who founded this land of bountiful beauty. The Union Pacific and the Rio Grande fought hard for passengers. The Rio Grande got the best corner in town to sell tickets. For help with all your transportation problems, call Davis 25741 or visit Rio Grande's transportation center, ground floor corner, Hotel Utah. The train companies made sure that they were visible for modern travelers. Rio Grande sponsored our weather on the then new media of television. Your own home railroad, Rio Grande, main line to the Rockies, presents as a public service, the weekend weather. And the Rio Grande made sure its name was all over the map. And, it uh, was always a great day to travel by train. And for this time of year, any time you can get a 70 degrees, it's mighty good weather. Well, it was the perfect time, and Utah was in the perfect place in the West for the glory days of trains. To fully appreciate Salt Lake City and understand its unique historical background requires far more time than the few brief hours we have enjoyed. Hours amongst people friendly and hospitable. But we face the inflexible reality of railroad schedules. And it's back on board. Utah is the Desert Empire. Now there still is a passenger train in and out of Salt Lake City, Provo, Helper, and Green River. The train is the California Zephyr. And if you're looking to go east, it's kind of an early morning. It gets here at about 3 in the morning. West, it arrives at about 11 at night. 